Launching cargo only. That's Boeing's latest strategy to salvage its Starliner spacecraft while it awaits certification. A major setback for the vehicle built by an organization famously touted for its safety standards that SpaceX must also adhere to. So, can Boeing's Starliner survive with this new approach? Is this a sign it may never carry astronauts again? Should NASA consider dropping this vehicle from its contract? And how has Elon Musk responded? Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's now been nearly two months since the crewless return of Starliner's CFT-1 mission, and the issues are still under investigation, with little progress reported. This uncertainty is echoed in NASA's recent crew mission updates for next year, leaving Starliner's future schedule in limbo. The reason is clear, Starliner still hasn't achieved crew launch certification. But while the launch timeline remains unclear, one thing is certain, the losses continue to mount. Years of delays due to testing issues, pre-launch setbacks, post-launch complications, and now yet another delay for inspections have all contributed to a staggering financial toll. In the second quarter alone, Boeing reported a 125 million US dollar loss from pre-flight delays, bringing total losses from Starliner to a shocking 1.85 billion dollars. And this figure doesn't even account for the additional costs of the CFT-1 delays and the current investigation. Keep in mind that $1.85 billion is part of Boeing's total $6 billion loss, indicating the depth of the crisis the company faces. With all systems facing challenges, Starliner appears to have no straightforward path to resolution. In response, Boeing has put forth a last resort strategy to keep the project afloat. The company is considering a Starliner cargo mission to the ISS, a shift to cargo-only flights to generate revenue while the spacecraft awaits crew certification. Yes, you heard that right. Cargo, not crew. In theory, launching cargo-only missions could be a reasonable approach for Boeing, as cargo missions involve less risk and could help maintain Starliner's operational momentum. However, in practice, this solution is far from straightforward. First, there's the issue of hardware. Boeing currently has only two Starliner capsules. One of these was recently used in the CFT-1 mission, and it's now undergoing issue checks and being held back for NASA's certification review, making it unavailable for other missions. The second capsule is seemingly ready. It successfully docked with the ISS in May of 2022. However, Boeing initially designated this capsule for Starliner 1, assuming they received NASA certification. If Boeing diverts it for a cargo mission, it could further delay Starliner 1. This leads to a second issue. Boeing mentions a cargo mission as a means of offsetting costs, but is a single mission sufficient? Given the indefinite timeline for Starliner's certification, Boeing might be forced to run additional test missions, resulting in further delays. It's unclear whether one cargo mission would be financially adequate to counter the losses. Boeing might argue that if one cargo mission isn't enough, they could schedule more, but this raises the question, is a single capsule capable of supporting multiple missions without impacting the readiness of Starliner 1? This dependency on a limited number of capsules could create a cascading delay effect, challenging Boeing's ability to maintain its commitments. It's important to remember why Starliner was created in the first place. With 4.5 billion US dollars in NASA funding, Boeing's commitment was to complete at least six crewed flights to the ISS, not cargo missions. Shifting focus to cargo could make people question its purpose and Boeing's reputation. After all, how does it reflect on a four and a half billion dollar investment if the spacecraft is primarily launching cargo? Moreover, NASA's confidence in Starliner's ability to handle these missions is uncertain. With Dragon already conducting three cargo missions annually and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus regularly resupplying the ISS, NASA's resupply needs are well covered. Additionally, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser is expected to begin operations next year, raising further questions about the necessity of using Starliner for cargo. This idea of converting Starliner to a cargo vehicle has sparked widespread reactions. Musk, founder of SpaceX, which operates 
operates the Dragon spacecraft, commented, There is no logical purpose to Starliner, given that NASA plans to deorbit space station in about roughly five years. Musk's point is significant. Starliner's delays aren't just a financial burden, they're also causing scheduling setbacks. Even if Boeing manages to secure certification under the troubled CFT-1 mission, Starliner-1 likely wouldn't launch until at least the second half of 2025. From there, Boeing would have a mere five years to complete the remaining five missions, a challenging prospect. And that's assuming Starliner-1 can even launch on time, which remains uncertain. With the dubious timeline, Boeing's proposal to convert Starliner to a cargo vehicle raises serious doubts about its ability to fulfill crewed missions within the ISS's remaining operational years. Musk's criticism of Starliner's purpose seems increasingly valid. Adding to the skepticism, Boeing has openly stated it will not engage in any more fixed price contracts, a move that implies an acknowledgement of their struggles. Recent reports even suggest that Boeing might be considering selling Starliner altogether. If true, this would likely be the most disappointing outcome. As it suggests, Boeing's motivation to launch cargo is merely to keep Starliner functional, not to meet NASA's needs. Given this scenario, some might argue NASA should recover the $4.5 billion it invested in the project. As for potential buyers, some speculate that Blue Origin could step in, as they currently lack an orbital capsule. This pairing might make sense for Blue Origin, but it raises questions about Starliner's ultimate value and purpose. Regardless of what lies ahead, Starliner's journey has been fraught with setbacks. Its mission seems increasingly misaligned, its roadmap flawed, and its potential limited. Rather than prolonging the project, why not consider cancellation? If you agree, respond with cancel it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel for more updates on SpaceX's development journey. With Boeing's Starliner facing ongoing challenges, it seems likely that SpaceX's Dragon will continue to serve as NASA's reliable partner for the ISS's remaining years. Unlike Starliner, Dragon has consistently demonstrated its capabilities, completing 10 successful crew missions, including a demo flight and maintaining a flawless track record. In fact, SpaceX's Dragon will play a critical role in the upcoming Crew-9 mission, which is set to bring home two astronauts who were originally meant to return on Starliner. This highlights Dragon's reliability and importance in compensating for the setbacks caused by Boeing's spacecraft. Looking ahead, Dragon's contributions will only grow. NASA has confirmed at least five more crew missions for Dragon to the ISS, likely more as the Starliner issues persist. Additionally, SpaceX is slated to maintain its steady pace of ISS resupply missions, averaging three cargo flights annually, with a record of 30 completed cargo missions to date. Beyond its current roles, Dragon was also selected by NASA for the critical task of deorbiting the ISS, a challenging assignment that reflects both the trust in and the honor granted to SpaceX's spacecraft. As we transition into the post-ISS era, Dragon's involvement will extend even further, with anticipated roles in supporting new commercial space stations like VAST, Axiom, and Starlab. These stations will likely rely on SpaceX for launches and Dragon for crew and cargo operations, reinforcing its position as a central figure in the next chapter of human spaceflight. NASA's goal of fostering competition in crewed spaceflight has faced significant setbacks, largely due to the ongoing issues with Boeing's Starliner. While NASA recognizes the crucial role that SpaceX's Dragon plays, they initially aimed to support multiple providers to reduce dependence on a single company. This was evident in their decision to select two contractors a decade ago to ensure choice and flexibility. However, Starliner's challenges have not only cost NASA time and financial resources, but have also strained scheduling for missions to the ISS. Despite these issues, NASA appears committed to keeping options open. The agency may continue to support Starliner's development, possibly by facilitating cargo-only flights in an effort to sustain the program. In the meantime, NASA is also turning its attention toward Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. Dream Chaser has completed its preparations and shows promise as a viable competitor to Dragon. Yet, the vehicle faces a key obstacle, its reliance on ULA's Vulcan rocket, which is currently dealing with delays. Should Vulcan's launch issues remain unresolved, Dream Chaser's entry into service could be delayed, leaving NASA with limited alternatives for resupply missions. Despite the uncertainties, the arrival of Dream Chaser could represent a much-needed boost to competition in the sector, potentially driving further innovation. The end may be near for Boeing's Starliner. Ironically, every attempt Boeing makes to salvage the spacecraft seems only to bring it closer to its unceremonious finish.
If Starliner, initially intended to support the ISS, is phased out before the ISS itself retires, it would mark a significant setback for both Boeing and NASA's objectives. Now, with limited options, Boeing faces the challenging task of moving forward with the substantial weight of these setbacks. The upcoming decision from NASA on Boeing's cargo launch request may determine Starliner's fate. This could either provide the program a last lifeline or be the final push that brings down Boeing's struggling spacecraft venture. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.